going on everybody welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about death note so i'm going to be doing this a little bit in reverse and instead of reviewing the death note animated series the anime first i'm going to be jumping into the live action adaptations of this series and then at the end as kind of a refresher kind of a breath of fresh air after these live action adaptations then I will be reviewing the anime series. And the reason for that genuinely is because I've been joining my buddy Mike on his channel, The Z Review, uh, for reviewing these movies over there. So I figured, why not kind of tail his reviews with my own reviews here where I can get a little bit deeper into the movie and my thoughts, as well as have a guest who joins me here in these videos, which in this video, it's going to be my buddy Tajaya from his channel, Blacktastic Media. We're going to be hearing from him in just a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and get into my thoughts on the 2006 first ever live action adaptation, Japanese film of the anime called Death Note. I also want to let you guys know right out of the gate that growing up, Death Note was one of those earlier things I jumped into and really got me into anime. You know, I grew up like a lot of kids here in America watching things like Pokemon, Sailor Moon, Digimon, Dragon Ball. And so it wasn't until I was a little bit older that I really started getting into anime. And Death Note was definitely one of those earlier installments of anime that definitely got me into it. And one thing I'll say right out of the gate that's pretty well known to anybody who's an anime fan, which, you know, now that I think about it, I don't think I've reviewed an anime here on the channel yet, which kind of excites me. There's still so much to talk about that I love and things that I don't love so much. And uh, yeah, Death Note is just definitely one of those earlier things in anime that I definitely really latched onto. Um, but yeah, what I could say right out of the gate is that a lot of anime movies just tend not to be too great. And I mean the live action adaptations. It's just a struggle to be able to take the medium of anime that is so specific in its animation, its voice acting style, its feel, its vibe, everything about anime is so specific to that medium that translating it to live action just usually does not translate over really well. And I can't really think of any live action adaptation of an anime story that has ever fully done justice to the animation in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, there are some that I think are better than others, and, you know, we'll get into it, especially with this series. But what I will say overall is that I am a big fan of that original series. I look forward to doing a review of it when I rewatch it and kind of get a fresher take on it today because I haven't seen it in quite some time. But yeah, one thing I love about Death Note right out of the gate is the premise. You have this book called The Death Note that is kind of going around to different people who are chosen. Uh, there is this death demon, death god named Ryuk, who's got a really cool design, who is the one who kind of picks these various people and is kind of lingering around to whoever ends up taking on the death note. The death note is like a little journal, a little book that if you write somebody's name in it, they will die. And you can literally get super specific and write the person's name, where they'll die, how they'll die, and the exact time that they will die. And anything that you write in that book, it will happen. That individual will indeed die. And so this individual who ends up taking on the death note is consistently visited by Rick, this death god who's constantly kind of lingering around them, putting little whispers into their ear, or sometimes just kind of being there as a nuisance or just hanging around with this individual because nobody else can see Ryuk except for the person who is currently wielding the Death Note. That's where we're introduced to Light, our main character of this series, who does in fact end up getting his hands on this book and, and decides to end up using it for good. He ends up finding various criminals and people who maybe didn't get the punishment that they necessarily deserve, people who got out of prison early. Uh, he ends up killing people like that. And so for a while, he's kind of seen as a hero. He has a pseudonym that he's known for online and through the media in general. They just know that there's this individual who, who's killing all these people. But they don't know that initially. It just seems like accidental deaths. And it isn't until this investigative mind named L, who is a bit of a strange character and definitely a lot stranger in this movie than in the anime, at least in my opinion. Uh, this character named L, who is a very unseemingly really intelligent person, uh, who starts to figure out that there's somebody behind this and ends up working with the police force to try to discover who it is that's behind these killings when it is just this you know average college high school guy uh, who just has this book and is thinking he's doing good but he ends up getting caught up into a bunch of nonsense l ends up finding out who he is individually and uh, that's where our story kind of takes place. Overall, what I enjoy about this version of the story versus a lot of other live action adaptations is that they knew that they needed to split this into two movies. So there's Death Note and then there's Death Note 2, The Last Name, which I will be reviewing with Blacktastic in the future. But for right now, we're talking about the first part. And I really have to commend the creators of this movie for knowing that they had to split this up between two movies because one of the biggest crimes that most live action adaptations do is taking a narrative that is spread 
spread across an entire series. And in this case, it's a fairly shorter show overall, but there are some anime that have way longer, you know, run times and they try to jam pack a story into two hours. And I'm sorry, it's just not possible. And it's a big reason outside of other issues, why a lot of live action adaptations for animes just don't work. You know, you just cannot jam pack you know, what is hours worth of watch time into an hour and a half, two hour movie. It just, it just doesn't work. And I think that we've definitely seen that as a big struggle for a lot of live action adaptations of anime movies in general. And so what I can say overall about this movie is that it's just okay. I think that the movie does a good job of spreading out the story a lot better than the, maybe the 2017 Netflix version, but the movie in and of itself, I feel like struggles with its identity. There are times when you're watching this movie where it feels like a more grounded approach to this story. And then there's times where it feels certain performances for certain lines of dialogue. And it's definitely the death scenes where people are dying are just so overacted that it very much feels like it's in line more with the anime. Anime just, again, has a very specific feel and vibe. Everything from the animation style, the very uh, overacted moments, as well as some of the very more subtle moments in the acting. Uh, everything about it is so hyper-specific to that medium, and it just does not translate over. There's a charm to the way that, you know, maybe certain characters are over-emotive or maybe overacted in an anime that really works for the series versus it not necessarily working in the same way in live action without coming across very hokey. Anime is not something like a Disney movie that can be brought to live action and kind of be reimagined in this way that feels very much in line with the original film. With anime, there's just such a specific feel and vibe to the performances, to the animation, to the music, to the tone of those stories, as well as having these very bizarre narratives. You know, anime is all about these really big, over-the-top, crazy outfits, storylines that have a lot of emotion and heart and charm and a romance at the center of it with a very bizarre and wacky premise and, and, and character and world that just really fits the animation style of anime and that overall feel and tone that anime is able to kind of bring out. It's just a, such a different medium compared to a lot of other things you can watch. And I think they really struggle sometimes bringing it to live action. And it's moments like that in this movie with the performances kind of feeling inconsistent that kind of took me out of it and made me laugh at certain moments that I don't think you're necessarily supposed to laugh at. I mentioned earlier that if you are the person who possesses the Death Note, you are visited by Ryuk, who is the death god. And I think the best live action adaptation that we've gotten of him thus far was in the 2017 Netflix American version played by Willem Dafoe. Now we could, in this dream of yours, take care of a situation like this. We just put Kenny's name down and see what happens. The mix of practical and digital effects for that version of the character, as well as Willem Dafoe doing the motion capture and his voice, fits it perfectly and I really enjoy that as far as a live action adaptation of Ryuk. Even though that movie doesn't do a lot of justice to the source material overall, I think overall that version of Ryuk is without a doubt the best one. And in this movie, Ryuk is rough. They took the exact same model, essentially the very same you know design of the character from the anime and popped him into this movie, but the CG for him is terrible. And this movie came out in 2006, so you know we were already you know, pretty early on in CG, but we still had a lot of really great CG heavy movies that had already come out before this that looked a lot better. And Ryuk in this movie for me looks like a Snapchat filter. <laughs> He looks like one of those really bad, you know, just CG computer generated images that just kind of pops up on your shoulder, like the cat Snapchat filter or whatever, you know, one of those where it's just some random thing that appears on the screen with you. Almost any scene that he shows up in, in this movie just doesn't work. It's cheesy. It's just completely over the top. And it just kind of leaves you feeling like uh, uh, he's a cartoon character that was slapped on after the fact. He doesn't feel like he fits the tone and visual style of this film in any way, shape or form. And yeah, I gotta say on an overall level that this movie just does not work for me on every level, but I really like the premise. Now, before I wrap up my thoughts on this, let's go ahead and hear what my buddy Tajaya from Blacktastic Media had to say about this one. Yo, what's up? I'm back again on Planet Anthony A. Perez. It's been a minute since we did a collab, but we're busy, we got busy schedules, but we always make time to get together on these collabs. Death Note. 
is the poster he sent me. I'm like, okay, okay. I've never seen the Japanese version, nor have I seen the manga or any of the anime. Now, I'll be honest, in 2017 was my first ever exposure to Death Note on Netflix. And I only heard good things about the anime and the manga saying it was internationally loved and everything. So I sat down to watch this in 2017. It was cool. I didn't finish it. It didn't capture my attention enough to finish the whole series. So I opted out. Now, I watched the Japanese version and you know us Americans always steal and borrow from the Japanese and um, vastly different um, first of all like the character I guess he was in high school and the other version this version he is like in college uh, he's studying law very smart dude so I would see why this demon this death demon will choose him to go around executing people, you know, it's just think you're doing a moral justice to the world, and really you're part of the problem. And L and Netflix was black. Well, obviously he's Japanese in this version. I, I like the black version because I like uh, Lakeith Stanfair. He's a cool ass actor. Look like a ninja half the time, but you know. But anyway, the premise of this story is incredible. If you had a chance and the power to have a notebook and you could write somebody's name in there and the way they die to execute them is brilliant. It was given to you by a death demon and you have an investigator in L who's tracking down all these murders and this, this guy realized, look, yeah, there are some supernatural elements, but trust me, there's a man, a human being behind all these murders. That's captivating. Execution, eh, a little different. Um, again, never seen the anime, nor the manga, so I don't know the lore and all that stuff. But when I watched this earlier today, the main character, the death demon, looked stupid. The, 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 the CG just was so bad it took me out of the movie and it's the character I fell in love with because in the TV series on Netflix at least he was practical he was in the shadows a lot his eyes was illuminated but it was cool this was so bad he would pop into the frame of the picture and every time he pop on you know how something is so uncomfortable you can't look at it like somebody falls out in front of you like oh boy uh Oh boy, it's still there. Oh, that's how I felt. I just couldn't make the two mesh. It just took me out of the picture totally. Um, the Japanese version, you can tell they try to emulate the manga and the anime because they was overacting, over exaggerating, and that just makes me laugh. But it's their culture. I respect their culture, the way they do films and acting and stuff like that. It's totally different than American culture, so I try to adjust. And sometimes it's just not for me. Such a great premise. I guess it hasn't been a good film made about this manga yet. And that's the impression that I get. Uh, there were some moments. I like some of the kills. Um, uh, the characters are attractive. The women are beautiful. Love the atmosphere love the settings of all the cities and everything that was great and you know i just couldn't buy into it totally i wanted to but i just couldn't do it um i guess there's another version of part two to this other movie i'm dying to see that but uh death note man excellent premise execution was subpar and the two versions I've seen of this film, man, I didn't finish the Netflix version. This one had a hard time getting through it. But once I got through it, I can say that I watched it. <laughs> That's about it, man. I, I, I wasn't thoroughly impressed from everything I heard about it. Then, you know, as I'm listening to other people, um, they kind of feel the same way. 
the anime is untouchable. And when you try to adapt something like that to live action, it almost never works. They've been trying and trying and trying and trying. And yet, 95% of the time, it doesn't work. So, you know, with that, if you haven't seen it, check it out. The premise alone is enough to keep you engaged. I do like the characters. I like the females. I like Light. I like L. Raikou, the actual demon of death, is incredible. You know, his look, the wings, the skinny stature. He's eight feet tall. Awesome. But maybe one more shot at the movie in the future, they might get it right. I don't know. Until then, I'm going to hand it over to my man, Anthony A. Perez. Thank you for hooking me up to see something new that I haven't seen before. I was somewhat impressed, but I'll never watch this again. I'll be honest with you. But let me know how you feel and tell the folks at home who's watching, we love you guys. Damn, it's good to be back on my man's planet. Yes, Anthony A. Perez doing the damn thing. Peace, and I'm out. And just remember, if I offend you, don't hold me. Don't hold me to that. It's just my point of view. A big thanks to Blocktastic for being here in another video. As usual, my friend, thank you so much for being in a video. I loved hearing your thoughts. And it seems like we're pretty much on the same page. You know, this was your first introduction, really jumping in and really and actually watching the entirety of the movie. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts as time goes on. Your thoughts on Ryuk definitely are shared here. And it seems like we overall have a same kind of feel of this story and of this movie. A really interesting premise with so much potential. And that's what I love about the anime so much. So much potential with such a great great story and they nail it in the anime but the live action adaptation just doesn't have the execution needed to really tell the story in an exciting and fun way now again there are things about this movie that, that work i don't think this is a terrible movie i don't think this is a great movie i think there are elements that work there are performances that work the guy who plays light in this movie i think is pretty solid i enjoyed him um he's definitely a little more in line as far as live action adaptations of this character he's a lot more in line with the version in the anime whereas if you watch the 2017 netflix version Though I feel like that's maybe a better adaptation overall, which may be blasphemy for some, I think that the version that they did of Light in that movie is just atrocious. It's just very cringy, and I just don't understand why they went that route with the character of Light versus what they did in the anime. And in this movie, where he's a bit more of a more serious, stoic character who's not very easily scared, you know what I mean? Or at least he doesn't show it very easily. So I, I do enjoy the actor who plays Light in this film. The guy who plays the character of L in this film, who's the, the villain, essentially, the guy who is looking for Light, the guy who is behind all the deaths and who has the death note yeah i'm not a huge fan of l in this film you know he, he looks the part he kind of looks like the character from the anime uh, but the performance is cringe and uh, i just was struggling watching any scene with him in this movie uh, i like what they did with the live action version on the 2017 netflix version where you have um the keith stanfield who i thought did a good job of playing l making it very different giving it its own feel and vibe you know i, I really i gotta say i like a lot about that movie in, as far as a live action adaptation that does its own thing because because when it comes to an adaptation, I don't need it to be exactly like the source material. I just wanted to honor the source material and do something different and just kind of have a cohesive story. And I think that this movie is a little bit all over the place at times. It can be a little bit boring. The performances are inconsistent. Whereas I feel like the 2017 Netflix version, though it's not something that necessarily honors the source material 100%, it's an adaptation. It does its own thing. It feels different. And it tells us a story from beginning to end that, you know, I, I, though it is a little bit jam-packed in again, because that is like a two-hour movie that tries to jam-pack a whole series into it, I think that that one did a little bit better of a job. Whereas this one, though it is spread out between two movies, sometimes it drags, sometimes the performances are inconsistent. The CGI on Ryuk is very laughably bad, especially for the time. If this was an older movie, it'd probably be a little more forgiving. But overall, there's just no way of denying that when you see any of the sequences with Ryuk in this movie, he stands out like a sore thumb and he kind of takes you out of the movie. Again, as I was watching it, all I could think the entire time was he looks like a Snapchat filter. So overall, my thoughts on Death Note 2006 is that you have such a solid premise, but they just really struggle to be able to bring this story to live action in a really cool way. It just goes to show that anime is a medium that is incredibly difficult to translate to live action 
and try to, you know, kind of appease the fans in various different ways by making it feel like a live action anime, but also making it feel like a live action movie in and of itself, just a normal movie. And I think that that's something that I enjoy more about the 2017 Netflix version, because I think that that movie did a better job of taking that premise and making it a little bit more of its own movie, whereas this one feels like it's trying to be its own movie while also trying to be the anime, and it doesn't always work for me. Overall, not the greatest Death Note movie, not the best anime uh, adaptation movie, but also not the worst, so I'll, I'll say that. So overall, Death Note 2006, those are my thoughts. Do I recommend it? I think it's worth watching at least once if you're curious. I don't think this is a terrible movie, but I don't think it's a great movie either. So yeah, guys, Death Note 2006. Leave your comments down below. Are you a fan of the anime? Are you a fan of this movie? Which is your favorite of the live action versions of this story? Is it one of these movies with the Death Note 1 and Death Note 2, the last name? Is it the 2017 uh, version that they ended up doing uh, for Netflix? Or is it maybe even the uh, Japanese TV series, miniseries that they did as well? I'm definitely curious which is your favorite of the, this story. I'm going to assume your favorite of this story is the anime. Uh, but which is your favorite of the live action versions? Definitely leave all of those comments down below hit that like button comment your thoughts subscribe for more videos the link to blacktastic media is down below in the description box go give them some love let them know i sent you and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye